Hey, greetings, everybody. My name is John Walker. I'm the business development manager at EOS North America. I'm Rich Wojcik from Impressio, a mechanical design engineer. And we're here today to talk to you about the partnership between EOS and Impressio and also how it relates to the NFL's Helmet Challenge event. Impressio is really a fellowship of business and engineering professionals who really believe in utilizing science to solve some of the more challenging problems we face uh, uh, today. Uh, we just happen to be focusing at this time on sports helmets. I can uh, pull up a, a quick slideshow to kind of il illustrate what our core technology, our liquid crystal elastomers are and how we best utilize them. To talk about our core technology at Impressio, liquid crystal elastomers, uh, I think it'd be best to illustrate it uh, as follows. It's kind of one part liquid and you can see on the left, on the molecular scale, liquids kind of like to move around uh, freely around each other. Uh, so that's the liquid part. Uh, the elastomer part is describing how our material is like a rubber. On the right, you'll see the molecular chains kind of stretching, like rubber bands, imagine that. Uh, really, our LCEs combine those two properties to make uh, a liquid crystal and elastomer that you see kind of rotating and spinning on your screen below. Uh, so why is that important? Well, it's important because uh, the, the LCEs don't absorb energy like a traditional rubber or a foam by pure just compression. Uh, it actually absorbs energy by rotating on the molecular level. So instead of stretching or crushing like a rubber or just displacing like a liquid, it combines the two properties that allow the molecules to rotate. And when you do that, it actually di uh, dissipates an enormous amount of energy, making it uniquely uh, applicable to putting into helmets. And so once you've developed a material, can you show us some tests about how you actually validate and use data and science to prove that your material is better than traditional materials? Absolutely. So I guess the first example I can show is, is what's on the screen. So we have a couple uh, rubber balls. We have a rubber ball on your left and your LCE on your right. And uh, you can see the rubber just keeps bouncing. So an engineer or material scientist might describe that as a material that has a lot of uh, or has a high degree of uh, a coefficient of restitution, meaning uh, you put in 100% of the energy you want to test with and 90 or whatever percent is going to go back into the ball or the, the material to bounce back. Uh, our LCEs operate in the exact opposite way. So as I uh, aforementioned earlier, you know, with the molecular rotation of the molecules, uh, the LCEs absorb a lot of that energy. So it doesn't get translated back into the ball to bounce it. Uh, so that's why you see it kind of hit the ground and stop versus the rubber ball that keeps bouncing. Now, that's a unique property that allows it to uh, kind of protect protect the brain. At least that's what, what we're trying to evaluate um, when we put, uh, take this material and we install it inside of a helmet. And uh, we might do that based on the following. So the LCE technology is really unique. I've never seen a bouncy ball that doesn't bounce before. Is this material something you developed in house? Is this patented? Could you tell us a little bit more about that side of the LCEs? Sure, absolutely. That's a great question. So uh, Impressio uh, is, was founded by University of Colorado Denver College of Engineering uh, professors. Uh, Christopher Yakaki, who's our current CEO, um, started it uh, based on his research in the liquid crystalline uh, uh, arena. And so it was, uh, it was all grant funded research uh, from academia uh, to when Chris uh, kind of came up with, with the linchpin of the whole thing, which is how do you manufacture this stuff that's been around since the 80s, um, to actually make it, uh, to make enough of it, to put it into a rubber that makes it commercially useful. So uh, Chris started Impressio to do that. Uh, we licensed the, the, the technology from the University of Colorado, so we 100% own it um, in its entirety. Uh, so that's what enables us to really start a company and, and really pursue this NFL helmet challenge. Yeah, and I think that's a really interesting thing to point out as well, is that the LCE technology is patented, as well as the uh, lattice generation within the EOS digital foam for foam replacement. So any solution that we jointly develop together is truly going to be a unique proprietary solution as well. And that's, I think, a really important thing is, you know, 3D printing can be done in a lot of ways, but not every solution has our patented digital foam or Impressio's patented LCE pillars. Yeah, and, and, and something else, too, uh, I might add is, you know, patents are great. 
but you know you can patent darn near anything. But I think the important thing is that the patents uh, are surrounding a technology that actually works. I mean, in house we've we've evaluated a bunch of different. Uh, materials from a variety of different manufacturers, and, and to be honest, uh, EOS's uh, a, a TPU material has always come out on top. So it's really a technology that uh, you know is, is is worth patenting and is worth pursuing because it, it it functionally works. So Impressio is really focusing on uh, additive additive manufacturing technology, uh, specifically with with EOS, and uh, what we're doing with it is we're creating lattice structures and putting ports inside of our lattice structures to install our LCE pillars. And you can see an example of rendering here on the right, where we're really trying to blend together the ideas of having a really novel material, uh, having an advanced manufacturing setup, and incorporating intelligent design to try to figure out how to blend those two together. And so will your finished product be a whole new football helmet with a shell and a cage? Would the finished product be a 3D printed LCE pillar, what does your deliverable product look like? So what our deliverable product looks like uh, is, is that uh, we're not trying to reinvent the helmet, exterior shells, face masks, that whole system. We're not trying to do that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to revolutionize and change, make it cause a giant paradigm shift in how energy absorbent materials inside of helmets have been for the past few decades. So we're trying to get rid of foams as we know them. Uh, and installing uh, uh, pads made up of a lattice and LCE construct uh, to, to, to replace them. So the idea is uh, it doesn't matter if uh, you know your helmet is uh, from XYZ manufacturer or what sport you're playing, uh, we could design a, a liner that will go inside of that helmet uh, that is readily adaptable, uh, it'll be more comfortable, it'll be more customizable, and it will outperform current materials on the market. So to summarize, LCE would be strategically used in locations where you may need to dissipate or absorb the most amount of energy, or are you going to 3D print the whole liner with an LCE? The answer is yes to your first statement. So, so what we're trying to do, we would intelligently place the LCE pillars into those key positions uh, where energy absorption uh, is, is, is strongly needed. So for instance, you can almost imagine if you're an NFL player, and uh, a quarterback's helmet is going to have a lot different uh, uh, mechanical property needs than say an offensive lineman or a running back or maybe even a wide receiver. Um, so if you can imagine, uh, uh, you know, a, an offensive lineman takes a lot of head on blows uh, during the game, a wide receiver uh, might get hit from the back a lot or from the side. And the idea is with this kind of solution with the lattice construct and LCE pillars, we are able to make uh, position specific designs if needed, uh, where we could put more LCD pillars, say, in the sides or evenly distribute them or focus them in a, in a specific location. So we really have a lot of uh, flexibility there. So not only the topic of mass customization in terms of a custom fit helmet for players, so we could start off, you know, using an iPad, doing data capture to get a 3D rendering of somebody's head, and then using software um, like Entopology to fill that negative space with a lattice. And when I say negative sp space, that's the area between the outside of your head and the inside of the helmet shell. Then we could also use the concept of mass customization again to do player specific helmets where the LCEs and the lattice shapes would change via different position on the field. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. So you've used Entopology software, you've designed your lattice, you've taken your proprietary LC pillars strategically located them inside this lattice. We've mounted it inside of a shut football helmet. What's the next step in the process? Well, that's the, probably the most interesting part of the whole process. And uh, Impressio has, uh, has, has gone above and beyond to develop their own, uh, our own rather, uh, uh, testing lab, where we have made our own equipment to be able to evaluate the performance of football helmets according to a variety of different uh, published standards, whether it's the NFL standard or Noxie standards. And I have a great video I can show you demonstrating one of them. Yeah, this is probably the most exciting part. So let's definitely take a look at this. All right. So yeah, so uh, this is an example of what I like to think of as the business end of probably our most exciting machine that we've built in-house. Uh, it's a linear impactor, uh, originally designed to meet Noxie uh, 081 standards. Uh, it can also be adapted to uh, to conform to NFL standards. Um, 
But basically what it does is uh, you see kind of on the right, we have a crash test dummy head. We have a helmet. We have a big cable coming out of the neck and chin area. Uh, those wires are, are corresponding to nine, a nine accelerometer array uh, near the centroid of the head. Uh, and basically what we're measuring here is we're measuring the accelerations uh, that the head is experiencing, uh, both linearly and rotationally. Uh, the most the, the most recent data and studies on concussion have uh, correlated a, a strong link between your rotational accelerations and concussion. So uh, the rotational aspect is what makes this test very interesting. So John uh, mentioned uh, mentioned uh, how we might evaluate uh, the performance of a helmet uh, when we have a lattice plus LCE array. We would install it in our helmet. And then uh, basically what you would do, you would take a stock off the shelf helmet like we have here, uh, a very common football helmet you'd find in the store, put it on the, uh, put it on the head form, uh, hit it with the RAM, uh, and then we would record the data that the accelerometers pick up. So the accelerometers are going to say that it performed at a certain level in a certain uh, coordinate system. And uh, we would use that as a benchmark. We would swap out the helmets. Uh, installing a helmet that has our LC and lattice uh, array inside of it and hit it again and then compare the two sets of data. And when we do that, we see uh, a dramatic difference in our, our re reduction in rotational and linear accelerations, which is good for brain health and also kind of confirm, uh, confirms the fact that fit is really important. So with a lattice and it more easily conforms to your head. So this is truly a data-driven way to design a new football helmet. This isn't just marketing speak where we're going to say EOS digital foam is cool. We're going to start designing a helmet using that technology because we think it's marketable. You're actually able to quantify that you're going to make a safer football helmet. A hundred percent. As I mentioned earlier, Impressio is, is, is truly a fellowship of engineering and business-minded people that really believe in the power of science and technology. So all of our decisions, everything I'm saying is backed up by our data. Uh, it is not marketing and, uh, you know, and it's, and it's hard to cheat a test. You know, it's uh, uh, the, the results that I'm talking about too. Uh, some of them have been independently verified. Uh, meaning outside of our labs, we haven't done the testing. We basically uh, passed along the design and told another lab, hey, test it. Does this really work or are we lying to ourselves? And turns out we aren't. We really have something substantial here, thanks to EOS's digital foam uh, capabilities and our liquid crystalline elastomers. And what, this is probably the most important question I'm gonna ask you all day. How heavy is that rim that we see? Is this like five pounds, 50 pounds? Like kind of force are you applying in this video we're seeing? It's funny, I get that question a lot. And what I, uh, usually the first question is, how does it work, you know? Uh, and basically I liken it to a giant potato cannon. Um, so if you see the people with PVC tubes and, you know, shove a potato down there and fire it, that's basically how it works. Um, except for this one, uh, to get to your question, it's about a 40 pound rod, a steel rod, a two inch diameter steel rod uh, that is accelerating from zero meters per second all the way up to about nine meters per second. So basically going from zero to about 20 miles an hour or so within uh, a handful of milliseconds. So it's it's pretty incredible and uh, it's it, it kind of gets a, a little scare out of uh, people who've never seen it before. So you've done a great job of explaining to us what Impressio does, what's unique about your LCE technology, how you're incorporating EOS digital foam and how you actually validate that you're making a better product through the unique capabilities of 3D printing. So the real reason we are talking today is specifically to address the NFL helmet challenge. So can you tell us what the challenge is and what the current status of that overall bigger project is? Absolutely. Uh, so the NFL helmet challenge is extremely important to us and uh, we are happy and excited to announce uh, publicly that the NFL has awarded us nearly a half a million dollars to develop uh, a brand new uh, uh, energy absorbing liner for, for football helmets. Uh, we're, we're proud to take on this enormous challenge with a few key partners, uh, EOS being one, Shut Football uh, uh, being the other, uh, along with Entopology Software and the University of Colorado Denver Department of Engineering. So, um, yeah, so, so, so with, with those kind of powerhouses of technology and science, we're, we're hoping to meet 
the uh, the performance aspects that the NFL is really looking to achieve with this challenge. And I guess more broadly, I can describe the NFL helmet challenge best by saying that the NFL is really putting their money where their mouth is. Uh, over over the last uh, few months, maybe a couple of years, uh, concussions and NFL players uh, have really dominated that news stream. So the NFL has certainly taken notice because their fans have taken notice. And me being the father of a two year old, uh, parents, I'm sure, are, are, uh, are, are noticing when they have their little ones interested in playing contact sports. So the NFL thought to themselves, how are we going to improve the performance of helmets and, and really get something done? Uh, so what they decided to do is put a one, $1 million dollar prize at the end of a year long tunnel that concludes somewhere around July of 2021. So really the helmet challenge is going on right now. So uh, what they have done is that they have outlined uh, a, a, a technical standard, a specification uh, where uh, Impressio and EOS and Entopology and CU Denver and Shut uh, aren't the only team uh, that are competing for this, but uh, they have uh, announced that the teams that do compete in order to be successful and be eligible to potentially win that $1 million prize have to come up with a helmet design, a helmet liner design that uh, achieves a helmet performance score of 0.7. Now, uh, to kind of describe that, to put that into in, 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 it's a layman's terms uh, so someone can digest it, is uh, kind of complicated. It's a big, long algorithm that the NFL has, has, has outlined in their specifications. It's a function of a bunch of different currently existing tests that measure things like your head injury criteria, something called damage. Um, and uh, it, it, essentially what it is, it's placing a really high bar on where they want to see helmet performance go. So that concludes in July, um, and we're pretty confident that uh, w with our partners and where our technology currently is that we're going to be successful. And so I think the way I like to look at it, too, is the NFL helmet testing standard is truly an evolution. At one point in time, the goal of the football helmet was to make sure you didn't crack your skull and die. As brutal yes. as that might sound, that's truly how the football helmet got started. And then here we are at a point today where we can actually use data and science to identify brain injuries, kind of reverse engineer how do we prevent those brain injuries, and then to speed up innovation, the NFL is actually crowdsourcing the design of that and looking at teams outside of their traditional supplier base um, to do this, i.e. Shut isn't doing this by themselves. Shut's working with Impressio, Entop, uh, UC Denver, and EOS with their digital phone to get this. So. I'd like to guarantee a victory, but you know, that's probably a little crass on camera, but if we are fortunate enough to win the prize, what happens next? So what happens next will be a truly, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know how it could be more exciting, but somehow I think it's going to be more exciting. Should we, should we win and be that fortunate? Um, but, but really what it's all about is it's great to come up with something in a laboratory setting. You know, the internet was made in, in, in a laboratory setting, but it, it really isn't going to impress very many people unless you can disseminate that and, and grow it to a larger audience. So uh, we're really going to take that approach should we win, because the idea is uh, we're going to want to take our technology and commercialize it. We want it to be put into commercially available football helmets. Uh, we want that to be disseminated to not only just the pros, so you can watch, you know, so some of your favorite players wear this technology. We really, we re we really want to enable this technology to trickle down into the youth sports market, uh, college, um, high school, et cetera, to really, you know, so you think, the full benefit. You think the safer helmet will actually reach a point that it's going to be scalable, and it's not just going to be, you know, some low volume, high price point item, you know, limited to elite professional multi-million dollar athletes. You truly believe that with 3D printing, your LCE technology, you'll be able to hit the throughputs and the volumes. So this is available, you know, your Dick Sporting Goods or a high school football team. Precisely. And, you know, that uh, you're kind of leading me into uh, uh, pat patting you and EOS on the back a little bit here. Because that's chiefly why we got into a, a, a relationship with ELS. Um, this wouldn't be possible unless you had a platform, an additive platform that yielded, a, a, that had a path to scalability. And uh, so the idea is, you know, with uh, we happen to be using an EOS P770 machine uh, that really lends us the capability of scaling this this sort of design. So whether you're looking at individual pads or full helmet liners, it has the build volume to be able to 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 actually make quite a few helmets. And then, of course, uh, 
because of that, we're able to uh, reasonably expect that we can get this into Dick's Sporting Goods, on, the, on the sell, sell it via Amazon, whatever, what have you, uh, to actually commercialize this and bring this to a price point where an average parent like myself could uh, potentially purchase this helmet for, for my 10 year old when he gets there and wants to play peewee football for the first time. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's the most important part, I think, for us as well, you know, in supporting you and supporting this event is that we all love football. Um, you know, I'm a big Eagles fan. Unfortunately, our quarterback, Carson Wentz, has been injured the past few years, and anything we can do to keep him on the field as a fan, you know, makes it awesome. But at the end of the day, the goal is to support the next generation. You know, people like yourself that are going to grow up to be an engineer, myself in business development, you know, and if we get hurt playing youth sports, it really ruins the rest of your life. And trying to find that balance, I think, is so important and really explains a lot of the benefits and the values where 3D printing is unique compared to traditional injection molding, you know, or die cut foams or some of the techniques that are currently mm -hmm. used today. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, uh, you know, that kind of puts the exclamation point in uh, why, you know, this is such a valuable relationship for Impressio. Um, for EOS and just the market in general. Like we're really trying to destabilize this kind of market and uh, really kind of try to demonstrate as a giant uh, uh, case study that look, this is possible. This is where we are today with uh, additive manufacturing, so. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today and learning more about Impressio out of Colorado, uh, more about what EOS Digital Foam is doing for us globally and how we are supporting the NFL Challenge. If you have any follow-up questions after watching this video, please throw them in the comments section below and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Please everybody out there, stay safe with uh, the coronavirus and COVID pandemic going on right now. We look forward to updating you more in the future with the NFL Challenge and hopefully a big W of our own. Awesome. Thank you.